We've located Joe Monroe's son. Cops in Ohio caught him switching the license plate. They found a 9mm Glock 17. You were a member of the new Victory Church, correct? I play drums in the band there three times a week. That's correct. So what were you doing in Ohio switching the license plates on your car? I was going to visit a buddy of mine and I noticed my tags were expired and I was like, I don't want to get pulled over because I have a lot of parking tickets. I know it's pretty stupid. Where'd you get the stolen plates? I had them in my garage. Not the sharpest knife in the drawer. But that's what he wants you to think. Let's talk about your mother's gun. The murder weapon, which was found in your car. I didn't have anything to do with Pastor Harris's murder. Your mother know you took off with her gun? She gave it to you to get rid of? My mom had nothing to do with it either. Then who did? You've already got her. It was Martha, she did it. The preacher's wife. How do you know that? Because I was sleeping with her. Jeff said, I know. I know about everything. And then he asked Todd to come over and talk. I left, and when I came back, Jeff was dead. We would like to enter into evidence Pastor Harris's phone records. Last phone call he made was to Joan Monroe's house, where the defendant was residing. Mrs. Harris, one last question. Why didn't you call 911 when you found your husband's body? I felt responsible. And I was scared that everything about the affair would come out. I didn't know what to do. And then I kept thinking, if I hadn't been unfaithful, Jeff would still be alive. No further questions, Your Honor. I just have a few questions, Mrs. Harris. You were at one time the church secretary for New Victory Evangelical, were you not? Uh, briefly last year. So you have a working knowledge of the church's finances, bank accounts, passwords, usernames? I did. Your Honor, I would like to read this piece of correspondence from the Southern Guarantee Bank of Costa Rica. Objection, Your Honor. We are unaware of any such letter. That's because it just arrived in the mail. Counselors to the bench. Are we just supposed to take this at face value, Your Honor? We have no way of authenticating these documents. I agree, Miss Chase. This is uh, quite a development. I suggest we take a recess and convene in my chambers. For instance? For instance. In this email, he claimed a child in his fictitious Nigerian church was healed from cancer after intensive prayer, to which Pastor Harris responded, This is a miracle. Just this past week, my secretary, Joan Monroe's breast cancer, went into remission. God answers all our prayers. He played on his own mother's cancer. It's all part of the affinity scam, building trust through a common set of beliefs. In this way, he was able to advance his purpose with surprising speed. And his goal? To acquire the building fund. Hmm. What's that? Photocopies of Martha Harris's birth certificate, driver's license, social security card, credit cards, bank statements, everything you need to steal her identity. And why would he need Martha Harris's identity? To set up an offshore account. Whose idea was it to open a post office box together? Mrs. Harris's. She wanted a way to communicate with me without using the phone. In the time you spent with her, did Martha Harris ever mention the Nigerian scam? She talked about it constantly. Her husband had gotten one of those letters, and he thought the whole thing was for real. She couldn't believe how gullible he was. So she knew it was a scam. She said she'd seen a whole program on 60 Minutes about it. But then she got this idea to steal the church building fund. She wanted to pretend to be a Nigerian scammer so that when she took the church building fund, everyone, including Pastor Harris, would think the Nigerians were the ones that took it, which is exactly what happened. And did Mrs. Harris ever ask you if you would help her with all this? She said I'd get half the building fund. Is that why you continued to see her? Yes. You used her. You took advantage of her loneliness. I'm not proud of it. Did she instruct you on how to alter the Nigerian documents? She did. Did you steal her identity? No. She gave me all her info. She asked me to open an account in her name. She came up with everything. And did Mrs. Harris ever speak to you about why she wanted to steal the money? She wanted to get back at my mom and brother Jeff. Tell us what you mean by that. 
She was convinced they were seeing each other. Your mother, Joan Monroe, and Pastor Harris having an affair. And were they? No. But you couldn't tell her that. She knew if she took that money, my mom and brother Jeff would get blamed for the whole thing. How did the 9 millimeter pistol that killed Pastor Jeff Harris come to be in your car? Mrs. Harris and I would drive separately down to Madison to meet. She didn't like being in the car by herself, so she asked me to get her some protection. So you stole your mom's gun? I borrowed my mom's pistol and I gave it to Mrs. Harris. The night Brother Jeff was killed, she brought it back to me, said she didn't want it anymore, said made her nervous. Next thing I know, I'm arrested for murder. So you hear that Pastor Harris has been killed and that his wife's missing, the same woman who brought back the gun to you. And what do you do? Call the police? No. Why not? Because I was afraid my mom would get blamed. Really? That's touching. Where were you the morning after Pastor Harris was killed? In church. Getting ready to play in the band. Isn't it true you went to church that morning to avoid suspicion? No. And didn't you flee two days later when Martha Harris was arrested because you were concerned she'd identify you? No. And didn't you steal a license plate in Ohio to avoid getting caught? No. And weren't you taking the murder weapon with you in order to dispose of it as far from the crime scene as possible? No. No? No further questions, Your Honor. Todd Monroe came up with a brilliant plan. He saw that if he spread the poison promise of non-existent millions, remember, these people were already engaged in raising money to build a church. He could exploit them, and he did. He played his pastor, the pastor's wife, even his own mother. And when Pastor Harris called on that fatal night and said, I know everything, Todd Monroe assumed the pastor was talking about the money he'd just stolen. Two hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars, the building fund. Todd Monroe was gonna hang on to that money. He'd gone to a lot of trouble to get it. He had to shut Pastor Harris up. So he shot him. Todd Monroe held Pastor Harris in the highest regard. This was the man that had saved him from the ravages of alcohol. In his care, Todd Monroe was learning to believe in himself again. But it was this very vulnerability that Martha Harris exploited. She hatched the plan to take the money. It was her jealousy, a jealousy so blind that it assumed an affair where there was none. Ladies and gentlemen, Martha Harris had come undone. And my client was unlucky enough to be there to catch her when she fell. And the prosecution knows all this. In fact, until recently, they had been building a case against her. No wonder, after all, there's an offshore account with all the money from the church building fund with her name on it. Follow the money, ladies and gentlemen. It leads to Mrs. Harris, not Todd Monroe. Todd Monroe killed Pastor Harris? Doesn't add up. case of the state of Indiana versus Todd Monroe Jr. The count of murder. The jury finds the defendant guilty.